In PRISM, we have a staff deep dive view where we're able to look look across specific episodes or holistically across them. And when we look at some of the drivers across these episodes, we can at a glance see that today versus a year ago, penalties are steeper when the staff isn't readily available to assist or facilitate that prescription pickup. So customers are citing that they're getting more frustrated with this process. It's great to see you. Hi, Melissa. Good to see you too. Yeah, I'm so excited. We're here today to talk through some of the latest pharmacy insights. But I think before we dive in, do you mind kicking us off with some introductions? Yes. Hi, my name is Angie. I am in the New York office. Along with Melissa, we lead the U.S. retail for MPS Prism. Yes. Specifically, I help to support our pharmacy clients and instruments. So I can't wait to get into the latest insights with you today. I'm very excited to Melissa. Thank you for thank you for making the time today. So Melissa, there has been a lot of headlines in the pharmacy space. I'm hearing about pharmacists, staffing shortages, scrutiny on the roles and value that pharmacy benefit managers play in the prescription process, demands for transparency into Rx drug pricing and disruptors looking to bring more safe, affordable medication direct to consumer. So it feels like there's a lot going on. What CX trends are we seeing in PRISM data and who is leading the pharmacy experience currently? Absolutely. There's been a lot going on. So let's start with the big picture. If we look across the brand perceptions, we see that the independent pharmacies and some select grocers are actually leading the pack. In the middle of the pack, we see the traditional retail pharmacies, the pharmacy benefit managers, and then rounding out that middle and bottom quartile, that's where a lot of the e-pharmacists are uh, currently placed. That's very interesting. What can help explain that? Some of the factors we look at to explain the positioning has to do with the key purchasing criteria. This is where we know customers are looking for pharmacies that offer insurance coverage, uh, convenient location, offering their prescription, as well as some of the low cost out of pocket or for generic prescriptions. But what we found when we step back and look at the big picture is that the largest impact and influence on positioning has to do with the people skills and the staff interactions. Things like staff availability, knowledgeable staff, helpful staff. We're really able to see that the top performers are consistently scoring 20% better than competitors on these skills. A great example I like to share is when you think of the prescription pickup, It can feel a lot like a traditional retail checkout experience, but the episode leaders don't make it feel like a transaction. The staff is able to bring forward that warmth and care. They really bring it to the experience. For example, when it comes to prescription readiness, there's an episode penalty of about 60 to 80 points on um, whether or not that prescription is ready at the time the customer arrives. However, if we counter that with the episode penalty that occurs when a customer doesn't feel those soft skills and the warmth in that interaction, that episode penalty is actually over 95 points. So we can really see that's what's moving the needle. That's actually a huge factor why Publix does well in this. They're leading these two episodes and they're really truly winning customers over with each pickup that they make. That's fascinating. And that penalty difference is very large. So I can totally see why the local independent pharmacies as well as public's doing super well in this. And we actually do see this um, similar in groceries instrument. We see that Publix is doing super well on these people's people skills in the aisles and at the checkout. So not surprised that they're also doing well in pharmacy. Um, related to that, we do know that pharmacies have been under a lot of staffing pressures over the last year. How has that showing up in the data? We're absolutely picking up on this. In PRISM, we have a staff deep dive view where we're able to look, look across specific episodes or holistically across them. And when we look at some of the drivers across these episodes, we can at a glance see that today versus a year ago, penalties are steeper when the staff isn't readily available to assist or facilitate that prescription pickup. So customers are citing that they're getting more frustrated with this process. In parallel, we also see 2% fewer customers even being able to pick up their refill 
in under 10 minutes. So the lines are getting a bit longer. There's less efficiencies and the processes are starting to drive uh, just longer times in general. Very interesting. Can you speak more about what happens in peak cold flu season? I can't imagine it just gets a bit crazier. Does that also show up in the data? It does. So in NPS Prism, our quarterly fielding allows us to pull up every 90 days. So this is always a really key quarter where our clients love to get a read on what happens happened and why. So really what we're able to get a sense of is during this time, absolutely the stores are busier. And we have seen repeated dips in scores during this time frame. But what we also can then click into when we take the lens of uh, this quarter is that existing problems tend to get exacerbated. exacerbated. We've got fewer of the orders ready at pickup, We've got longer wait times. Um, But the one thing that I wanted to be clear about is that it's really not one size fits all. So in PRISM, you can not only see who's maybe better prepared to cope with the crowds, but you can see that who um, has had it maybe amplify existing issues or process breakdowns. So that's where you start to see the dip come forward. Subsequently, when we get into the next quarter, we'll often see a rebound, but it's really key to get that next quarter's read because that's where you can really start to identify and distinguish between systemic issues in a process or in the servicing that you provide versus um, just crowding crowds and coping with the busier stores. How have our clients used PRISM data to identify and prioritize CX opportunities? Absolutely. We have 19 distinct episodes in our pharmacy instrument. So we're able to take a lens across a number of factors. We've had some clients who decide to focus in on the new prescription experience versus refill. We've had others who really want to zero in on certain channels of fulfillment, the in-store, the drive-through, the deliver to home. But regardless of where the clients are focusing their efforts, what's really key is understanding first your current performance and second, how that stands relative to the competitive set. So once you've honed in on where uh, the episodes that have a gap to leader or where you're lagging and would like to see improvements made, the prescription is basically the same. We decide to go into that episode and really look at what matters most taking a look at the drivers behind it. These are the levers that are going to really help move the needle uh, much quicker and help you focus your efforts. So with that information at hand, if it's operational items like time to fill scripts versus maybe some of those soft skills where training could be rolled out across your pharmacy organization, we then are able to then have initiatives focused on those behaviors that will bring the most bang for the buck. Then within PRISM, you can measure, and then ideally, you start to see those drivers serve as leading indicators to that episode's performance beginning to that episode's performance beginning to improve. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. So like really starting from the top, understanding what episodes are important, and then the point of departure, like where we are starting, and then like the gap to leader, and the drivers underneath using PRISM. Um, So as you mentioned, I think it's really fascinating that we're able to tell like the penalty of the MPS when like if, it, if the staff driver goes wrong, is it the time? So being able to tell the difference and the importance and prioritize the drivers, I think that's a really interesting factor for PRISM um, on how customers, our clients use to identify CX opportunities. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for your time. I hope we can chat again soon. Yeah, this was fantastic. Thanks, Angie.